It's time to break down the X's and O's on Giants Rewind. What is this happy night here for a New York Giants podcast? Welcome to the newest edition of the Giants Rewind podcast. John Schmoke with you. Today's guest is Giants Super Bowl champion and former center Sean O'Hara, part of our Giants broadcast team. Just a reminder that the Giants Rewind is part of our podcast network, which is presented by Investors Bank. You can find the archive of all of our podcasts on Giants.com, the Giants mobile app, and all of our favorite podcast platforms. Now we're joined by Sean O'Hara. And Sean, uh, let's not mince words here. Giants get pretty much blown out and dominated by the Ravens. They basically controlled the game from start to finish. How did it happen? Yeah, no doubt about it. The Giants seemed like they were in an eggnog fog from the holiday. And, you know, it wasn't just offensively, just off to a putrid start. Uh, Three and out to start the game, back-to-back false starts. Uh, which you can't do. And and then even on their second possession, you know, they have a drop on third and six by Austin Mack, Um, you know, just self-inflicted wounds offensively, and you cannot continue to do that. I know Daniel Jones was coming back off of injury, but you you can't put your defense in that position. They've done it multiple weeks now, and it happened against Arizona. Um, It happened against Cleveland, the slow starts. So against Baltimore, the, the really the shocking thing was defensively, John, they struggled. I mean, in, in that Arizona game, um, you know, when you think about the fact that the defense got put out on a short field, they held them on that very first drive. They held them no points. They didn't even give a field goal. They had that goal on stand. So defensively to allow them to march right down the field, 13 plays, 82 yards for a touchdown on both on both of their first two drives, they scored touchdowns. So immediately you look up and it's 14 nothing, and that just changes everything. And, and you could see um, that, you know, the wheels started to really fall off and – that Baltimore Ravens defense was pinning their ears back and coming after Daniel Jones. They were bringing blitz after blitz. And, you know, the Giants really just could not get any rhythm. It really wasn't until the fourth quarter that they even got uh, their first third down conversion, thanks to Sterling Shepard and his great effort. So just not really in sync. They, they, they finally showed some life in the fourth quarter, but by then the damage was done. Yeah, we'll get back to why the defense struggled. But, look, you're allowed to have one three and out if, if you're the Giants offense. The problem is that. Those are the only three plays that they officially ran in the first quarter because of those two long drives. So uh, speaking as a former offensive player, Sean, when you have that much time between drives, I think they gained one first down on their next drive, and then the Ravens got the ball again, kicked another field goal on a long drive. So when, when you go a quarter and a half, I think the Giants had, I'm not even sure if they had 10 minutes of time of possession in the first half. I don't think they did. How do you get into any sort of rhythm when you just don't have enough at-bats to get anything going? Yeah, it makes it really hard to to have some sort of rhythm, both physically and mentally. You know, you're trying to get an idea of, all right, defensively, are they doing something different than we saw on film? Um, and then, what, you know, one of the things that you love to do is is start to wear down the defense and hopefully get them, you know, suck at some wind, get some hands on the hips. So the fact that they couldn't do that now, you keep, it keeps that defense fresh, um, and and it really makes it hard. The Giants did go no huddle a couple times to try to create a spark, try to create something. Um, you know, but if it, it was really, it just seemed like they were they were sledding uphill all day long, um, and there was a couple of missed throws. You know, there was a couple of drops. You know, Darius Slayton, there was a nice ball. It seemed like, you know, it was too many my bads. Daniel Jones made a nice throw, and they don't complete the catch. My bad. And then on another one, he misses a throw, and then then somebody, you know, I thought Wayne Gallman struggled in pass protection. There was a couple of plays where he missed the blitzer, didn't didn't pick him up very cleanly. Deion Lewis had a missed pickup on a blitz too. Yeah, Deion Lewis. So both the running backs, you know, look, the Ravens were, were trying to create pressure by that matchup, and that was something that they really struggled with. And what should we make of this offensive line, Sean? You know, we had that stretch kind of in that two-thirds area of the season where they put some good games together. Then again, in those games, they were able to run the ball successfully. They took leads. They didn't have to throw it a lot. Because it seems like the pattern we're seeing is that once this team gets into a situation where they have to throw it, the offensive line can't hold up against blitzes and pass rushes and things of that nature. So what should we make of this offensive line right now, at least from a pass protection standpoint? Not just for this final game against the Cowboys. We'll get to that. But even now moving forward into the next season, just in terms of where the unit's at and and kind of what you're dealing with. Really, I mean, the one thing that just comes to mind is just the, the youth aspect, you know. And, and look, for all intents and purposes, there are three rookies pl- 
playing on the from the center, left guard, left tackle with Shane Lemieux, Andrew Thomas, with Nick Gates. Nick Gates is is basically a rookie, and they're they're just still learning on the fly. And they, and you've got a young quarterback at Daniel Jones, who has been in and out of the lineup for the last couple of weeks. So mentally, th- things just kind of speed up and accelerate. So I look at that aspect and I and I say, okay, that that unit has to think the same without even speaking. You, yes, you want to have communication, you want to talk, but you've got to have that nonverbal communication and you've got to be on the same page. And they just haven't had enough time to do that. It doesn't help when you're getting uh, you know, three and outs and, and you don't have any rhythm. But I also think that offensively, they have to find a way to start faster in the run game. And Wayne Gallman has left some yards out there and missed a couple of holes here and there. But you know, I think Jason Garrett, the tough thing for him is he's got some really good plays, some really good creative plays. When, when is the right time to call that? And I feel like there have been times where the Giants start to get momentum offensively, and then they call a gadget play, and it doesn't work, or it kind of stunts the drive. So, um, you know, it's it just it kind of feels like a square peg in a round hole sometimes. But I, I think that the Giants have really found a couple of signature plays in the running game. Their weak side counter play, where they pull Shane Lemieux and Caden Smith on the open side, and they kick out the defensive end and pour up inside. That has been their bread and butter. Actually, that started in week five against Dallas earlier this year. They really started playing that uh, that scheme really well. And I think they need to build off of that and continue to run that play. How about the blitz pickup? We noticed it against Arizona in the back half of that game. We saw it again in this Baltimore game. Two heavy blitz teams, and they blitzed the heck out of the Giants in the second half of those two games. And just frankly, showing too many free runners. How does that get fixed? What's the problem? Yeah, it's all about communication, and, and Daniel Jones has got to grab the bull by the horns. You know, look, that's your responsibility as a quarterback. Um, he, he's smart enough. He should be able to figure it out, and he's got to handle it. And he and Nick Gates, you know, they, they've got to find a way. Look, crowd noise is not an issue, so there is no excuse. You can't say it's silent count, and they were really loud down in Baltimore because they weren't. So it, there's no excuses for that. But when you play a veteran defense like that, they know what you're trying to do. They understand that, hey, we're trying to confuse him, and this guy's kind of young, and maybe he's seeing ghosts. and. Um, so they move around and they make it hard on you. And what happens is if you don't pick up a blitz in the first quarter or the second quarter and they get home or they look at the pictures and they see that they've got an unblocked blitzer, they're going to keep running it and until you put that fire out. And this is not something new, John. This has been something that they've been struggling all year long. They really have not had an answer for the blitz. The New York Giants and Quest Diagnostics want our fans to come back stronger than ever. Now you can order your own lab test through Quest Direct to get the health answers you need most. All right, let's go to the defense quick, Sean, before we head over to the Dallas game because I think that's what a lot of fans are probably thinking about already now uh, with the potential playoff berth at stake depending on what happens with Washington and Philadelphia. But, look, we've seen this defense struggle with different things at different times this year. I think this was the first time we really saw them just get beat physically up front again and again. It wasn't – look, they had a couple chunk plays in the run game later, but it was really just grind it out. We're going to run it at you. We're going to run some play action off of that, complete some short passes. And the Giants just could not find an answer for that Ravens run-based attack. Yeah, you know, Snoop Dogg said it best in one of his songs. Uh, it's called Doing Too Much. And, and that's what it seemed like with the Giants' defense. They were all so geeked up on trying to stop Lamar Jackson and, and the quarterback read option. Everybody was flying into the line of scrimmage, and they were all focused inside when Baltimore brought their extra offensive lineman, Matt Skura, in, and they lost contain. And, and it looked like there was a number of times where Tay Crowder, uh, you know, was not reading the flow, you know, and he was supposed to scrape and, and have outside contain. And, you know, Blake Martinez was inside, and, and Tay Crowder didn't get to his spot. Logan Ryan looked out of position a couple of times. So um, that, that looked like they were seeing some foreign things. And I, and I think – that be- it happens because you're trying so hard to stop the run. You're trying to sell out. But this Giants defense has been a little bit of an enigma this year. You know, I mean, who would have thought that, that Lamar Jackson would have more passing touchdowns against the Giants than Russell Wilson? You know, and you go back and you look at that game against the Seahawks and you think, wow, man, if they could play like that every single week, the, the, you know, the back end of the defense, the coverage was working so well with the front end and they were getting pressure. And, um, you know, that pressure has not been consistent in the last couple of weeks. Baker Mayfield had way too much time. Um, you know, they- it's really falling apart the last three weeks. They haven't got any pressure against the Browns, against Arizona, or against the Ravens. Yeah, and, and with Kyler Murray, you know, I thought they did a good, pretty good job containing him. But it's, you know, Baker Mayfield, one sack, it was Dexter Lawrence. Um, so that, that, that hasn't gotten home. Um, and, and I know that they're frustrated by it, too. Um, this is a good opportunity for them against Dallas to try to find a way 
to get pressure. Andy Dalton's a pocket quarterback. You don't have to worry about him running around the pocket like he did with Lamar, with Kyler, or even Baker. But, you know, Baker uh, is a pretty mobile quarterback. So this is a true pocket quarterback and, and uh, against a Cowboys offensive line that has struggled sometimes this, this season. Giant fans get a New York Giants checking account from Investors Bank with the Giants branded debit card, security features, and discounts at the Giants online shop. You can earn up to $250 when you open an account at InvestorsBank.com slash Giants. Member FDIC. All right, so let, let's get to it. Giants and Cowboys, uh, I think the Cowboys, they've scored 30-plus in three straight games, right? So they've basically scored more in every individual game the last three weeks and the Giants have in the last three weeks combined. So you figure the Giants are going to have to get to at least 24 or 27 Sean, in this game to win, and we'll get to the running game, I suppose, but I want to start here. Look, the biggest issue to me with this Giants offense this year is they cannot create enough chunk plays. In this league now, that's how you score points. you got to create some big plays in the pass game. The Giants have not been able to do it, but if there's any team that's going to create some big chunk plays in the pass game against, it's the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, Andy Dalton's coming off of a season high, 377 yards. Um, you know, I've been calling them the, the triplets, um, Michael Gallup and Amari Cooper and CeeDee Lamb. The, all three of them have been phenomenal. They all all three had a catch over 50 yards, to your point about the big plays. So this is going to be a big test, you know, and, and CeeDee Lamb, I think, in the slot, he, he's probably the most dynamic out of all three. And, and you get him the football in space. He is slippery. He is fast. He's got unbelievable acceleration. Um, and, you know, Amari Cooper on the outside, you know, he, he's had probably one of the quieter 1,000-yard seasons for a receiver you could think of, but they really spread the ball around. All three of them have five touchdowns. Michael Gallup, of course, had the two big catches against the Giants in Week 5 with Andy Dalton coming in of relief for Dak Prescott, and those catches led to the field goals. So, you know, Gallup is, is, is very explosive as well, and I think Andy Dalton, you see the confidence building in this offense. Um, you could see Kellen Moore, the offensive coordinator, they're both in sync. They're doing a really nice job mixing the ball around, spreading around, attacking the defenses on the perimeter as well as in the middle of the field. Yeah, and the Giants' defense has been one of the best teams in preventing those big plays. But, Sean, can the Giants' offense match up? Can they make big plays against this Cowboys' defense, which is as explosive as the Cowboys' offense has been, the Cowboys' defense has been just as poor. Yeah, no doubt about it. And, and offensively, look, at this point in the season, you know, with the rules and with what's going on, there's no excuses to not be able to score points. Everybody's doing it. The Cincinnati Bengals are scoring points with their third-string quarterback. Um, the Jets are scoring points, for crying out loud. And, and, you know, and it's not just Sam Darnold throwing the passes. Jamison Crowder's <laughs> giving the old heave-ho. So, you know, look, po points in, the, in a year where we've seen more points than ever before in the history of the game, the Giants have to find a way – to stay on the field. So third down is so crucial. And, you know, when they get down in the red zone, obviously you've got to find a way to punch it in. But they just need some rhythm. They need a little help. And you know what? In a game like this, pull out all the stops. Look, they're, you know, don't save any razzle-dazzle for next year. And I'm talking about special teams too. So I expect it to be, you know, the full arsenal of gadget plays, um, you know, special teams being aggressive, go forward on fourth down, whatever you need to do. But offensively, I think Darius Slayton has to get more targets. You know, he's been really the one playmaker offensively that's been able to spring plays. Sterling Shepard, we saw him catch a touchdown against Baltimore. But Darius Slayton ha has, has pulled a couple disappearing acts this year, and that can't happen against Dallas. And these offensive tackles are going to be tested again. Randy Gregory came back uh, midseason, give or take. I don't remember the exact game, but he didn't play against the Giants in that first game in Week 5. He's been great. You still have Alden Smith. You still have Demarcus Lawrence. While the Cowboys might have some issues on the back end, their pass rush is still working it pretty well. Yeah, they really are doing a good job. And Jim Tom Sula is their defensive line coach, and, and he's, you know, he's the Energizer Bunny. So, you know, they just do such a great job with their hands. Like, they, they, they look like ninjas out there with the, with the hand chops. And Demarcus Lawrence is five and a half sacks, and he's got four forced fumbles. So when he gets to the quarterback, he gets the ball out. That's something that Dan Jones is going to have to really be cognizant of. Um, as we all know. But, yeah, I think Alden Smith, you know, this matchup for Andrew Thomas is going to be big. Alden Smith, when you look at a lot of his quarterback pressures, he baits the tackles into opening up, and he beats them to the inside. He is a heavy-handed dude, um, and he's got super long arms. I call them go-go gadget arms. So this will be a, a good test against a long-arm tackle and Andrew Thomas. Finally, just give me your feel for how this whole final week's going to play out here. Keys for the Giants to win. You can give me your take on Washington and Philadelphia. We don't know if Alex Smith is going to play. Ian Rappaport reported on Monday that they think he's going to be able to. 
Who knows? It's Monday, a lot of time between now and game day. Just give me your whole feel for this final week of the year and how you think things are going to go. Yeah, it, it, I mean, down to the wire here, like we all thought. When the schedule came out this last spring, I looked at Week 17, I said, you know what, that game was going to decide the division. Obviously, with Washington playing Philly, um, you know, I, I think everybody thought that they would have more than six wins at this point. And, and of course, it, it, it certainly looked bleak at times. But, you know, look, for Giants fans right now, when we were 0-6 and, and you were saying, here we go, uh, another November uh, to forget another December with no meaningful games. No, we got it. We, I mean, this is, this could be a great ending to 2020 uh, to, to ride off into the playoffs. And, and I think for the Giants, you know, it's a shame that, that they can't have the fans here because it, it would be a great scene right here to be hosting the Cowboys um, in, in this game. But the most important thing for, for the Giants in this, in this game is they've got to start fast. You can't get behind. You can't let um, you can't let the Dallas Cowboys just lean on Zeke Elliott and and you know get an early lead like they did against Baltimore. Um, so they got to find a way to come out fast, and and you can't wait till the fourth quarter to get things started. Sean, good stuff, my friend. Hope you had a great Christmas, Happy New Year, and we'll talk to you down the road. All right, thanks, Johnny. You too. That's Sean O'Hara on the Giants Rewind Podcast, part of the Giants Podcast Network presented by Investors Bank. You can find the archive on Giants.com slash podcast, the Giants mobile app, and all your favorite podcast platforms. If you're on Apple Podcasts, please leave a five-star positive review if you like what you hear. For Sean, I'm Schmuck. We'll see you next time, everybody. Stay safe.